devs welcome back to the channel in today's video just like the title suggests i'm going to be going over everything in my work from home desk setup now i am hybrid at my day job so i do spend most of the week at the office i actually go in on tuesdays wednesdays and thursdays but i do work entirely from home on mondays and fridays so it's important to have a good ergonomic setup but before we get into it if you're new here i'm derek i'm a senior front-end engineer working in the gaming industry here in los angeles i make videos on JavaScript, tech, lifestyle, and working in gaming. So if that sort of thing interests you, consider tapping in and subscribing. So without any more yapping, let's just get into it and kick things off with the star of the show, which of course is the monitor. This beast of a monitor is the LG 40WP95C. I picked this up back when it dropped in 2021 and have had no regrets joining the ultra wide master race ever since. It's a 40 inch wide 5K by 2K display, giving you a full resolution of 5120 by 2160. It has a 21 by nine aspect ratio and 72 Hertz refresh rate which isn't anything astronomical but it is a typical bump up from your 60 hertz that you see on a lot of other monitors this size while it is not a dedicated gaming monitor and more designed for creative work and productivity it's still a decent pickup for my gamers out there since it does come with amd FreeSync. colors are vivid and accurate thanks to lg's trademarked nano ips technology and text looks crisp and sharp so if you're like me and you're staring at vs code all day that's definitely a plus to have. The curve is also subtle and not too overwhelming. I really think LG hit the sweet spot here. It's not distracting like it can be on other curved ultra wides. Another great thing about this monitor are the ports. Now I do actually have a comprehensive USB hub solution that I'll get into later in the video, but this monitor also acts as a light port hub. You've got two Thunderbolt ports in the back, two HDMIs, a display port input, headphone jack for audio, and even two USB-A ports nested on the side of the display. It also comes with two 10 watt speakers that actually surprisingly don't sound that bad. It is VESA mount compatible and I have mine mounted on a monitor arm from Vivo. Now the main reason I chose this monitor is obviously for the screen real estate. I like to go clamshell mode with my MacBook and just have one giant display for all of my windows. I can have a full size Slack window, Outlook, two full Chrome windows or an IDE and just a little space left over for jotting down some notes or a miscellaneous finder window. It's just perfect. I have a full spread of all of my application windows and don't have to switch between workspaces at all. It's it's honestly the best. Now moving on to the desk. I have the E7L Pro L-shaped standing desk by FlexiSpot. I upgraded to the bamboo topper, which has a really nice texture and look to it along with the white frame and legs to sort of complement the bright and coastal vibe I have going on in the apartment right now. I did wind up getting the larger size at 71 inches wide by 48 inches deep with the long side piece at 24 inches deep. This desk has three individual motors and can support up to an impressive 330 pounds of weight, so you virtually don't ever have to worry about what you put on it, it can handle it. I'm 6'1", about 168 pounds, and it has no problem raising with me sitting on it along with all of my other gear. The keypad is of course fully programmable with three height presets and an additional USB port for conveniently charging your devices. I was initially a little hesitant on going with the L shape, but now that I've had it for about seven months, and see the advantages, I'm honestly so glad I did. Having the additional desktop space has definitely come in clutch as that L shape is where I've been keeping a lot of my camera gear and other accessories. This desk is also a modular, meaning you can assemble it with the L shape on either the left or the right side, so that gives you some flexibility given any limitations in your space. One standout feature though is the collision detection system, which stops the desk from raising or lowering if it bumps into something, say, like your chair, for example. Speaking of, moving on to the chair. This is the Hibata E3 Pro Ergonomic Office Chair, and this... <laughs> This thing is insane. It comes fully customizable and is adjustable to suit basically any body type or stature. It has a three zone elastic lumbar support that can adjust vertically and front to back. And the adjustable side cushions give your lower back this nice little hug. It's kind of cool and a unique feature I've not seen on many other chairs. The dual axis headrest follows suit with height adjustments, tilting and lowering. And it's one of the widest headrests I've seen on a chair at 60 
16 inches wide. The chair's back is also height adjustable, letting you get the perfect configuration for whatever your height. So whether you're a tall or short king, this chair has you covered. The armrests are also great and probably one of my favorite features of the chair. FlexiSpot calls these their 6D armrests, given that they move vertically, front and back, shift left and right, and have three stage rotation, two stage flip up, and tilt sync, meaning that they tilt relative to the overall chair's tilt position. So pretty cool. They're great for elevating the arms to a nice comfortable position, especially during those long gaming sessions. And lastly, the cushion is this nice high elasticity material that's super breathable, keeping you cooler during the warmer summer months. All right, now let's talk lighting. For the light bar on top of the monitor, I have this one by Basis. It's USB powered with simple touch controls and you can toggle it from warm to neutral to cool lighting. And you can also adjust the brightness to your liking. For the bias lighting behind the monitor, I have a simple USB powered adhesive light strip that I got from Amazon. It's dimmable and also toggles from warm to neutral to cool light so I can match the light bar giving me full control of the type of light temperature environment I'd like to work in. Off to the side attached to the desk is this key light by Elgato. It's dimmable and also toggles from cool to warm light and fully controllable via their desktop app or for iOS as well. And like I mentioned before since I like to go clamshell mode with my setup I also have a 1080p webcam from Logitech mounted on top of the light bar. Okay, now for the peripherals. First up is the mouse and you guessed it, I have the mouse that just about every other dev tech creator out there has and that is the Logitech MX Master 3. Absolutely no complaints from this guy. It's fully capable and has phenomenal battery life, fast, smooth, horizontal and vertical scrolling and the extra back and forward buttons are always convenient and nice to have. I also have an Apple Magic trackpad that I'll swap with from time to time. It just depends on the task. This especially comes in handy with projects that require utilizing gestures. So for scrolling in all directions or pinching to zoom or designing in Figma or editing on a long timeline in Final Cut Pro like I'm doing right now. For the keys, I'm currently rocking the K65 Plus from Corsair with red switches. If you couldn't already tell, this was a gift from work as it was a part of a collab Call of Duty did with Corsair to promote the COD title releasing that year. I'm sure you've noticed the slick Black Ops 6 branding there, but this has been my daily driver for a while now and I'm very pleased with it. But every few months or so, I'll rotate this out for the Keychron K3 V2 or the Logitech MX Master Keys just to keep things fresh and mix it up. And nested below the keys is an ergonomic wrist pad from Glorious Gaming. Now onto the accessories. All of my peripherals sit on top of a desk mat by Orbit Key. I got the large size in black and absolutely love this thing. The material is very high quality. It has this convenient flap where you can hide away important documents if you'd like, a magnetic cable holder that you can position wherever you want, and this little groove at the top that also acts as a pen holder, so kind of nice. Now for that previously mentioned USB hub. This is the Fusion Dock Max 1 by Ivanki. It has 20. Yes, 20 ports on it, including Thunderbolt 4, SD card slots, and plenty of USB A and C. It is definitely a little pricey, but having access to this many ports at your fingertips is a major convenience. And as you can see, I have just about everything under the sun plugged into this thing so that I can have that clean and classic singular cable setup that just plugs right into my MacBook and then I'm good to go. And speaking of, to the left of the Ivanki dock, I have a simple aluminum stand that houses my 16 inch M2 Max MacBook Pro. Adding to those ergonomics below the desk is an elevated foot pad, an additional padded floor mat that I store off to the side just for those standing work sessions, a couple of simple desk organizers where I keep Michelin miscellaneous tech items, microphones, and camera gear and lenses, and also this tiny and easy to use productivity timer to sort of gamify my work blocks. Highly recommend picking something like this up. Connected to the edge of the desk, I have this little hook that I hang my headphones on. Funny enough, this hook actually came with my bathroom organizer and was meant to serve as the toilet paper roll holder, but I've already got one of those and this fit the edge of the desk perfectly, so now I just use it to hang my headsets on. Just adapt and 
and improvise, right? And of course, saving the best for last. Nested behind the monitor is my Xbox Series S for winding down for some gaming. And that's about it. That is the full tour of my ergonomic work from home desk setup for 2026. I will link everything featured in this video down below in the description. So if any of these items interested you, you can check them out. But that is going to do it for this one, devs. Appreciate y'all if you've made it this far into the video. Be sure to leave a like, comment, or support the channel and subscribe. But hey, thanks for tuning in. I will catch you all in the next one. Take care.